to order the special park and recreation commission meeting on May 3rd at uh, 9.04 AM. Hey. And let's, uh, we don't have any minutes to do, so let's do uh, take care of the hiring process, the first item on the agenda. So we just wanted to give an update. Um, the position was posted a little bit later uh, than we had expected. So um, I will be leaving on Wednesday evening um, and the position closes this Friday. So uh, you had given me the hiring authority for the last, um, at the last park commission meeting. So uh, since I'm going to be away, I would like uh, Tim to be able to have that uh, authority in my stead whilst I'm away. Um, our process is um, we've had one person, two people, sorry, apply. Um, and the one person um, has taken themselves out of the running. Um, but, you know, the person that we have, uh, we've definitely uh, interviewed previously and um, had been like a second runner up. So, um, you know, it's, it seems like that's somebody that we potentially could bring back in. Um, so, like I said, if that's a possibility, if that works out, um, I would like uh, Tim to be able to go through that process while I'm away, uh, just for the fact that we really do need to get somebody in uh, before the craziness of the summer season starts with all of the paperwork that's coming in to be able to get that person trained. Um, so that's ultimately the, the ask that I'm making. I know, Tim, if there's anything more you want to add to that. Uh no, I think uh, the only other piece to it is, you know, Alicia will be involved in the process. Yes. We're planning on doing the interviews tomorrow uh, prior to her departure and then barring anybody else, um, you know, applying between now and Friday and having to set up additional interviews. Um, that's why we're at, we're making this request because um, if anybody comes in Thursday or Friday, then we'll have to, you know, set some time next week to finalize the process. Uh, as of now, like Alicia said, in our two weeks of posting, we've only had two applicants. And um, one of being has been through the interview process twice. Both times she came up as the second runner up, once to the record position and once to the uh, administrative assistant position. And the other one was a newbie to us, but um, looks like Jarvis. I'm not sure it's a he or she. Um, your base. Uh, gave us an email the other day pulling out of the position. So that's what we're looking at. And we've worked closely with HR, so Michelle Viebert and Caitlin and everything else. So they'll still be part of the process as well, obviously. And I'll just uh, basically carry the paperwork upstairs, essentially. Um, so this person who says been a runner up twice for two other things. Yep. Why, why is this person always a runner up? What is preventing them from being the primary? That's a really good question, Aaron. Um, so we- I'm go allowed one process. a year. What's that? I'm, I'm allowed, allowed one, one good year. question a year. Well done, so that's it, check. Um, no, uh, so this, uh, when we go through the process, uh, because it's a government process, everything is done uh, in a very specific way. There's a specific set of questions every person has to be asked. Um, we go through as a team when we do the interviews and we add up the scores. So ultimately, um, we make the decision based off of how the, the answers have been um, scored, but also, uh, you know, there's other determining factors about culture, et cetera, whatever. Um, so in this case, it was um, the individuals that had been hired for those other positions had scored a little bit higher, um, not by much, but a little bit higher and had more experience in the field um, that we were specifically hiring for. But this this person is definitely, um, it, it just was unfortunate that, you know, she had different people in the pool that were, you know, a little bit more uh, advanced in the field, but she's amazing. Um, and I really, if we end up going with this person, have no doubts of, of bringing that person on. All right, that's cool. So there was no concern or anything. No, not at all. Yeah, it's so just the process. Yep. So not that Sweet. I hope that we ever have to do this again, Aaron. But if we do, and you're involved in it, you'll see. Um, it's 
honestly, the sheets that we use, everybody gets asked the exact same question with no variations whatsoever. And then literally we add up the scores. We talk about our scores and say, okay, well, this is why I felt this way. And then, you know, it's you either get a 51 or a 50 or a 38. And that's how we rank them one through. And then, you know, obviously we have deliberation and if for whatever reason, somebody's just an awesome fit, you know, Kaz, for example, right. Kaz actually did beat out somebody with a higher score because at the time we felt that um, his ties to the community and his charisma and some other stuff, you know, were things that outweighed some of the stuff that we could spend some time teaching him. And, you know, at the end of the day that played dividends. So um, that's just an example of the process to, to make you a little more aware of the whys and the hows. Cool. Thank you. And you're welcome if we ever have to go through it again, God forbid, but you're welcome to be a uh, part of that process. Sounds thrilling. I mean, certainly we, we're going to be hiring on a you know, semi-regular basis, I would imagine. So there will be an opportunity in the future. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it, <laughs> I did my <laughs> time. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? No. So do we, do we want to entertain a motion to uh, make Tim a hiring authority for this position? Sure. I will, I will uh, move, move to. Go ahead, so I'll Grant. second it. <laughs> you actually have to, you have to say it out loud. So. I have to say, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, Kevin cut me off before I could finish the motion. Move to uh, <laughs> grant Tim the hiring authority for the office coordinator position. That's a second from Kevin. All right. All in favor. Aaron. Yes. Saul. Yes. Kevin. Yes. And I'm yes. So, Tim, you are now the hiring authority. Congratulations. Thank you, gentlemen. I'll keep and, you guys posted. Just as an aside, I hope Saul and Kevin can work together a little better once the, <laughs> as the board moves on. <laughs> when, when Saul is the president or the, uh, what's it, the, the head commissioner? <laughs> I like to call it. I, I do like to call it President Kevin, but apparently that's not the right terminology. All right, let's move on. We have uh, Department Non-Discriminatory Policy. And yeah. Uh, so uh, again, I apologize for the, uh, it feels like a quickness of this one. Um, so we uh, obtained the uh, United Way uh, grant for our program uh, this for the end of the school year. And one of the requirements that they had for it was that there was a department non-discriminatory policy uh, on file. So at that time, like you didn't have to have all of that stuff. They were a little bit more flexible about things. Um, so now that we're going into the summer and I'm applying for the, the grant, same grant, but for our summer program, Teen Adventures, uh, they do wanna have those things solidified. So um, the deadline for this one is uh, on May 15th, I believe. So again, I'd like to do this before I go. Um, Saul had some really great questions on this one. So, um, you know, I, I understand if that's something that we need to delay, I can communicate with United Way and talk to them about that. That's no problem. Um, but so this idea of the policy though we don't have anything written as a statement is something that you know we operate by as you know just a general understanding so um <clears throat> you know if you have time or if you've already read this uh essentially the focus on this is is talking about you know our staff working with respect and dignity um for all individuals uh that we're yep, interacting with so whether that's uh, participants, whether that's parents, whether that's uh, town employees, uh, it's all in um, respect to that specific area. Um, so if you have any questions, I am here to answer those for you. So I guess, I mean, just to, to bring what I had asked yeah. about, um, I think in, in terms of the intent, it's great. Um, in the wording, I'm a little 
it it reads oddly to me and i'm not sure that it's how it gets implemented or what effect it has on you know <clears throat> some of the things just seem like they are the without regard piece and i understand it's part of a larger phrasing but right it it i'm not sure that's practical and and would like to hear from either the town council or or somebody else um or or find a better phrasing for that that you know just says we're we will act without discrimination um on the basis of these things or or something like that um without regard to the basis of these things yeah Yeah, you because know, there are things like, the, you know, I'm just thinking like the, you know, you send people to amusement parks and trampoline houses and places like that. And they have specific policies that say, you know, it's not safe if you're X, Y or Z or you need, you know, you have uh, requirements for for different activities. And some of those seem like they would be in conflict with this. And I, I just don't know how those things work out together. I think that's a fair point. With the exception of pregnancy, Saul, what do you see as? Well, I think I think for your trampoline uh, park. <laughs> what's that? For your trampoline park uh, explanation. Yeah, I mean that certainly that's one. Um, you know the <clears throat> we would I think I, I the other one I mentioned like we would be uh, seriously challenged by a person with physical disabilities in the sailing program depending on the disability yeah you know, that <clears throat> we we certainly can't give no regard to that yeah you know, we can can do our best to accommodate people but or even the hiking programs yeah you know, there are there are things that um yeah we we can't practically do or um I don't know if I don't know if this requires us to do that or or puts us in a position that that it seems like we're trying to do that. Um, yeah, and, and I think we want to accommodate people as best we can, but there are you know there are things we you know just can't do. Um, and, right. I, and I don't and know I, how to I don't know how to square those things. That's that's the the concern I have with this. So that's kind of the difference in, um, you know, Kevin, maybe you can speak to this a little bit too. At the conference, they talked about uh, inclusion versus actually creating programs uh, for adaptability. So, you know, in, in that area, as we always try to make reasonable accommodations, right? If, um, for example, a child needs a one-on-one -on -one aid and, a, and the parents are able or the schools are able to provide that then we're definitely going to try to see, you know, if the, the child would fit in within that program like Camp to Hadawan. Um, but it's reasonable accommodations. So if you end up uh, in a situation where, um, you know, it's not working, whether the child is, you know, physically aggressive towards some of the other campers and kids, then that's something that, you know, we've tried to make that work, but it, it doesn't work for the program. So that's the inclusion component of it. Whereas if we were creating an actual adaptive program, um, the adaptive programming would specifically be for, you know, uh, individuals that have either, uh, you know, a mental or physical disability. Um, so it's a, a little bit, um, I think once you start, we start talking about it in our field, uh, it makes sense of what those delineations are, but I do understand um, that it does kind of seem like a gray area. So I like I personally don't I don't feel that this is saying um, that we are responsible for doing those things. I think this is um, worded in a way that says we're expecting our staff um and to be able to operate on a level of communication that's uh providing respect and dignity for all the people that we're interacting with but may um, i may yeah. I make a suggestion <clears throat> sure all right so in our town in our on our town website so we this is actually part of our anti-discrimination policy 
And I'm just maybe suggesting for the purpose of this grant cycle or whatever needs to happen. So yeah. the actual way it's written, which was adopted by the Board of Selectmen on September 13th, 2010, is this policy of the town of Littleton is to promote professional and productive workplace in which everyone is treated with dignity and respect. Um, employees are expected to act in a positive manner and contribute to a productive work environment that is free from harassing or dis uh, disruptive activity. Discrimination, including harassment, whether based upon race, color, gender, national origin, religion, ancestry, age, sexual orientation, disability, paternity leave, genetics, active military status, or other basis prohibited under the uh, state or federal anti-discrimination statutes will not be tolerated. So what if we just pull out that paragraph yeah. and adopt that? And that is something that we absolutely could do, and that's a really good suggestion. Um, the only reason I didn't do that is because I felt like that was specifically for hiring in the workplace. Um, but if you guys are okay with that, we can do that too. Well, it's not hiring. This is this is more like employees. It's not tolerated of the employees. This is yeah, not I think if you right, I think if you take that, and I didn't without looking at it, but the, you know, sort of taking pull that, that up if it's on the website, Tim. Yeah. If you let me screen share, I can do it right now. So essentially this is our employee bylaws. Um, so if we put this up, it's basically, because that's what they're looking for. They're looking for something that's saying that we're holding our employees accountable as an anti-discriminant. Can everybody see that? All right, so it's it's literally the introductory paragraph. I mean, I want to see why, Alicia, you couldn't just submit this document because this is basically saying the town is holding to the employees to these standards. But if we physically wanted to adopt it as park and rec and have a policy in place, I would say we just take this first paragraph, change that okay. to town a little to park and recreation and amend it as needed. Yeah, and I think you could, if you tacked on the list of actors that you have in the the other statement, that would that would work. So, so how that, about yeah. we do this uh, for right now, so that I can complete the grant? I will submit this, and then when we come back in um, the end of May for our regular meeting, then we'll craft something so that it kind of. Um, so I'll work on it exactly when I come back. So then we can add this component in the other, and then I'll talk to Anthony and see if we can work with town council to be able to craft those two together so that it's meeting your requirements all of, of having town council review that. Does that work? Sounds good to me. Anybody else? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to email you guys a link um, to the same, just reply to the email Zoom link. Uh, of that policy just so you have it so um we can table that one then to the uh may I get my date right no you say Tim? didn't you say the doesn't the grant close on the 15th so not what being? i just what I just said before is I will send this document that you just showed us from um the town oh. to them um, to complete that that requirement. And then if we decide that we want to have one specific to parks and recreation, that maybe add some of those components of the one that I took from the National Parks and Recreation Association, um, uh, then we can work with the town uh, solicitor and be able to come up with something that, that passes all tests. I understand, sorry. That's okay. Um, so that meeting would be on May 24th. So we will table that and move on, my friends. All right. And uh, the written discount policy. Yeah. So, um, the, again, the reason that we talked about this at the uh, last uh, regular meeting so the, the purpose of this was uh, we had done our research on um, being able to create a, uh, a discount policy for town employees. Um, and the request was to have something written um, to be able to vote on. And 
essentially we have already had a 20% uh, discount uh, policy for veterans. So, um, you know, what we were looking at in previous con or conversations following that meeting was um, just to build off of that policy that we already have. So just saying that the department will provide a 20% discount uh, for in-house programming for veterans, emergency service workers, uh, and state and local government employees. So um, this discount's only available for in-house programming at the discretion of the department. And the reason for that being is if we're working with a vendor, we have a contract. So we're required to, um, you know, they invoice us. So we can't really add that percentage on uh, to those vendor programs that we have. But any of the in-house programming like Camp Tehadawan, Teen Adventures, um, the after school program, things like that, we would be able to do that. Yeah, just as a point of clarity, uh, this discount was originally for veterans, emergency service workers, first responders. So because first responders would now be covered under state local government employees, we switched out first responders for that last um, commented section. So now it's all inclusive. It's not just police and fire who are getting a discount. It's any state or local employee. That's great. Any and uh, sorry, Tim. No, I just wanted to, one more bullet point. Uh, we had our uh, monthly MRPA meeting um, this past month, uh, this past Friday uh, in Burlington, and Alicia did bring this topic up. And um, this is pretty status quo for what our neighboring departments are doing as well. I was actually shocked that a lot of them actually give up to 50%. Wow. Maybe we can increase it as time goes on if it uh, becomes really popular. You can try. As a policy board, you always have that option. <laughs> but with our mission statement of keeping costs down, Aaron, I mean, 20% is kind of stretched for us most of the time. I mean, we're really running tight to the the red black line, especially when, you know, we pay for every little bit of space and everything else that we get, you know, we get billed from the schools, we get billed from everybody. So 20, 20% 20 is kind of maxing it out for us. Oh, I don't mean do it anytime soon. <laughs> don't worry. Luckily you're not cutting any checks for us right now. Any other questions, comments about the discount policy? All right. We can, oh, I am unmuted. We can entertain a motion to approve this policy. <clears throat> All right, I'll approve, I'll uh, make a motion to approve the uh, discount policy as presented in today's meeting. I will second. <laughs> all right. All in favor, Aaron. Yes. Kevin. Yes. Saul. Yes. And I'm yes as well. So the motion's approved. All right. Paul Glavy's here. Um, I've got to leave in two minutes, Paul. So um, I, I don't mean to, make it short for you. What can we do for you? I can make it even shorter, Fred. Thank you for recognizing me. Actually, I was just checking in. I'm trying to get around to as many of the boards as they can, especially those who we haven't uh, met with board to board in a while. We do see Alicia in there for uh, either uh, uh, grants or updates or uh, gifts. So uh, I, I noticed you guys were meeting at nine this morning. So I checked in for no other reason just to see what you're up to. So I'm glad I did. Thanks. I don't, I don't know, Paul. I don't think I'm coming back again after you did that. <laughs> I'm quitting. All right. So um, I, we will entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. I just want to say, because uh, two of you wouldn't come in person to meet me last last month. So that's fine. I understand. But uh, it's been a pleasure working with all of you. And Kevin, I hope, you know, take a quick look. If you see me in the store, hopefully you'll recognize me next time we run into each other. And No uh, more masks, Fred. It, no more masks. It, it, it's, it's been a pleasure. I have to say it's, uh, it's a great group of people that I've had the opportunity to work with. And uh, 
I think it's going to be a continue on being well. And Alicia and Tim, you know, you can always call me if you need me to come help out or force my daughter to do something, however you want to handle it. So <laughs> let's go. So let's have a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Second. All in favor, Aaron. Yes. Kevin. Yep. Saul. Yes. And I'm yes. We are adjourned. You all take care and uh, I have to drive to Lowell now. Take care. All right. Thanks, all right. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Brett.